Growth hormone. Do you know what growth hormone is? It is a peptide, and they're like, wait, it is? They're like, well, I don't know. That's, that sounds dangerous. I'm like, okay, so we're going to take a, a man-made synthetic drug that's going to stimulate the release of growth hormone instead of just doing growth hormone. Yes, yes, that's precisely what we're going to do. So he's implying here that it's stupid to think that there's any benefit to hypermorelin, CJC1295, or tesamorelin over actual HGH. So first of all, HGH is indeed a peptide. He's right. And it may be bioidentical, but it's not just extracted from humans, it is also synthesized in a lab. Additionally, HGH floods the body with growth hormone. These other peptides, they maintain your body's natural pulsatile release of growth hormone. Can there be a benefit to this? Yeah, so flooding the body with exogenous GH tends to disproportionately increase IGF-1. And that leads to a relatively lower GH to IGF-1 ratio. Holding constant overall anabolic activity and anti-catabolic activity, a lower GH to IGF-1 ratio can be relatively worse for insulin sensitivity. So growth hormone itself in isolation from IGF-1 actually has many insulin sensitizing properties. It's lipolytic, it increases autophagy, while in contrast, IGF-1, it tends to desensitize the insulin receptors. So in cases of surplus IGF-1, GH can actually kind of act as a buffer and reduce the risk of developing insulin resistance from supraphysiological levels of IGF-1 over time. So his client's intuitions actually quite valid, you know, maybe don't be so eager to dismiss them and make fun of them online.